Well, despite a sluggish start in this one, the Oklahoma Sooners win and win big 56-14 over a Tulane squad that, you know, Tulane's offense definitely gave Oklahoma fits in that first quarter and a half. Let's face it. I mean, you don't face the spread option, the triple option attack from the shotgun, if you will, on a weekly basis. And, you know, after the game, Lincoln Riley, you know, described the game pretty well. He said it was just like their week of practice for this game. You know, it started sluggish, but, you know, it ended good. And in the beginning, you could tell that the Sooner defense was having fits trying to contain Tulane's option attack. John Trill Hillard of the, of the Green Wave ended up with over 100 yards on the ground. Most of that, though, occurred in the first quarter and a half of the game. The Sooners, you know, at, at times, just out of position. But at times, too, it didn't have anything to do with formation, just flat out missing tackles. And so, you know, 14 to 14, middle of the second quarter, Tulane driving again. You know, if, if you're a Sooner fan, you're thinking, uh oh, they're they're driving again, and if the Sooners aren't careful, these guys from New Orleans, you know, they're going to be in this game all the way to the end. But that's when Parnell Motley made the biggest play of the game. Tulane driving inside the Sooner thirty, a quick pass, and Motley was all over it, jumping in front of it and taking it to the house. And by the way, getting a nice block from Jordan Thomas along the way, laying a fantastic block. I believe it was on the quarterback Jonathan Brantley on that return, and it was a six pointer for the Sooners. And they end up going up 21-14. Not only did the Sooners never relinquish the lead after that, but Tulane never scored a point. And I really thought that that fired up the Sooner defense even more. And again, Tulane just wasn't the same offense after that Motley interception return. And I, I said it after the Ohio State game. I'm going to say it again. Parnell Motley is the upgrade that the Sooners have needed at that corner position. There's no question about that. So... You know, give credit to Neville Gallimore and Ovo last night, each with nine tackles, each with a sack. Uh, the Sooners, like I said, it wasn't pretty that first quarter and happened. And like I said, you know, it wasn't exactly the best week of practice. You're coming off that big-time high against Ohio State. Not to make excuses for the Sooners, but there was just no way they were going to get 100% emotionally jacked up, fired up to play Tulane. Nothing against Tulane, but you just beat the number two team in the country in Ohio State on the road. One of the biggest wins in recent Sooner memory. And now you're playing Tulane the next week, and you're at home. Yeah, you could tell defensively um, it wasn't the best performance early on. In fact, you know, the Sooners, you know, the two touchdowns that they gave up in the first quarter, that's as many touchdowns as they had given up the entire season. Remember, they gave up just one against UTEP and only one against the Ohio State offense. And so, um, yeah, it, it was stunning to see that the Sooners – you know, didn't have solutions in the first quarter and a half, but then they adjusted much better than that. And Tulane had very, very little rushing yardage in the final two and a half quarters. So you give Sooners credit for making the adjustments, but also, too, uh, for executing much better on that side of the ball. So, again, Tulane didn't score after the Parnell Motley pick six. So give it up to the Sooner defense for that. Um, offensively, Oklahoma looked like they were on their game. They, they looked like they were just flat out on their game all night long, um, except for that first possession, of course, where, you know, Mark Andrews, after the big reception, the OU tied in, coughed it up, and OU turned the ball over. But then um, after that was smooth sailing. Uh, you give credit to the OU offensive line for the protection for Baker Mayfield and also, too, for, again, being running back by committee, the Sooner offensive line um, opening up the holes, paving the way. And it was a very productive night for the Sooner offense with over 600 yards of total O. And um, C.D. Lamb, wow. <laughs> did you see the first touchdown? I mean, all C.D. Lamb did from OU's own 23 was just run in a straight line. He didn't do any juke moves. He didn't do any slants. He didn't do any 360s running. All he did was just run a straight line. Nobody from Tulane covered him. I don't think he, Tulane even knew he was on the field. And Mayfield found him, and he was so wide open. Easy score. In fact, land for the night. Four receptions, over 100 yards in receiving. Um, it was an early night for him because in the second quarter, he got kicked out of the game for targeting. Um, and, and one thing about targeting, you have to keep in mind, you don't necessarily have to be leading with your helmet on the head or neck area of a player. Okay, um, If you're leading with your shoulder and you're hitting the neck or or the neck or head area on a defenseless player. And that's the key thing, a defenseless player, a player that's not even going for the ball carrier. Um, if you're leading with your shoulder, your forearm, or your helmet uh, toward the neck or head area of a defenseless player, uh, they'll get you for targeting nine times out of ten. But the play happened in the second quarter, which is, is important in this case because if it had happened in the third or fourth quarter, 
um, Lamb would have missed the rest of that game plus the first half of the next game, which is next week against Baylor. Happened in the first half, so um, C.D. Lamb, who had one heck of a game but had that targeting penalty, uh, he'll still be able to play the entire game next week in Waco against Baylor. Um, you know, speaking of terrific games, um, Marquise Brown ended up being the leading receiver. Um, that's a guy that, by the way, didn't even play uh, last week against Ohio State, but play and play he did against the Green Wave with six receptions, well over 100 yards receiving. In fact, had 155 and had that big touchdown for the Sooners uh, later on in the second half, big as far as the yardage is amassed. Uh, speaking of guys that didn't play last week for the Sooners that played on Saturday against Tulane, how about Marcellia Sutton? It was running back by committee for the Sooners on uh, Saturday, and uh, one of those guys was Marcellia Sutton, who had a, a nice night for the Crimson and Cream with uh, six carries, 63 yards, in fact, a little over 10 yards a carry, and did add a touchdown, and we saw a lot of Abdul Adams as well. We didn't see much of him in the Ohio State game because of that fumble in the first quarter, and his night was done, but made amends for it with um, 93 yards and rushing and had a touchdown reception. Trey Sermon started the game with a couple of carries, but again, like I said, it was running back commit by committee, so uh, on the night, Sermon only had seven carries after that, but did have a touchdown. In fact, um, three of the four OU running backs had touchdowns on Saturday with Sermon, with Adams, and with Sutton. Uh, Rodney Anderson didn't carry the ball much, did not have a touchdown on Saturday. Baker Mayfield, um, typical Baker Mayfield performance. A lot of touchdowns, had four in the night, um, and no interceptions. Still has not thrown a pick for the year. As far as his accuracy in this game, though, it wasn't his best. Um, he did miss some guys. In fact, he was 18 of 28. So as far as accuracy, that part, a uh, bit of a downgrade from what we had seen in previous games. But still, like I said, he's not thrown an interception. Um, he was patient. And again, um, you know, Baker Mayfield you know, trying to win a Heisman Trophy, trying to become the sixth Heisman Trophy winner in school history, um, did not hurt his cause at all. Had another terrific night. And you get a feeling, by the way, um, with the way things are happening right now in college football, unless somebody else emerges, you know, with, with Louisville losing last night, losing big at home to Clemson, you know, Sam Darnold of USC, and we'll talk about Texas USC in a second, you know, wasn't one of his best nights ever. You know, Josh Rosen in UCLA, I know Rosen put up big numbers, but the Bruins lost. You have a feeling that the Heisman Trophy could come down to early November between two guys, Baker Mayfield and Mason Rudolph. Very well could be the case. Rudolph was fantastic against Pittsburgh on Saturday, even though I know Pittsburgh's not a good team, but still Rudolph has been has been absolutely sensational. So the Sooners, three games, three wins so far in the month of September. And again, Lincoln Riley's squad after the sluggish start against Tulane just absolutely uh, took it to another level, and the Sooners win 56 to 14, and they'll get ready for Baylor. We'll talk more about the OU Baylor matchup in a second, um, but you notice that I put a byline on my show saying that OU wins. And also, too, Texas almost scares USC. Sooner fans, and in this case, especially to the OU players, obviously when you play Texas, you know it's going to be a big-time robber. It's going to be a big-time game. Throw the records out. But if you needed further proof to take Texas seriously, look at last night's game of the Coliseum. Texas was more than a two-touchdown underdog. Shane Bouchel didn't play, still having shoulder issues. And yet, Texas almost pulled off one of the big stunners of the season of college football. They took USC to the limit, with double overtime. Trojans did pull it off. But I'm telling you what, Texas's defense, I mean, Todd Orlando's defense, boy, they look a lot better than they, they did a couple weeks ago against Maryland. I mean, Maryland just had their way with that um, Longhorn D carving them up. But last night was a much different story. You know, uh, Wheeler and, and Jefferson and company, um, there, there's no doubt that Texas has improved big time in just two weeks on defense. And that's one thing the series better keep in mind is that, you know, Texas might have two losses on the schedule. They might be the best two-loss team in the country. Oh, you better take them seriously. And hopefully, you know, and I say this because the last four games, you know, um, OU has not necessarily outplayed Texas. They've won a couple of games, but they've not necessarily outplayed them. In fact, three of the last four years in the Red River rivalry, Texas has outplayed Oklahoma. Last year's game could have gone either way. So if you needed further proof to take Texas seriously, other than the fact that they're your hated rivals from Austin, just look at Saturday night because the Longhorns, I mean, if you watch that game, and it was a late game, so I'm not sure if you got to see it, um, you might say that Texas should have won that game. Uh, they had some, some costly mistakes. They 
They were up very late. I think they'd scored with just under a minute to go to take the lead. And then USC marches down, gets the game time field goal. And then we have extra time. We have overtime. But, uh, you know, Texas, especially on defense, they, they look like uh, they're going to be a formidable opponent in the Big 12 and a nice recovery for Tom Herman's squad. Even though I know Texas doesn't take moral victories, I don't think anybody in college football does these days, I, I still think that they can take pride in knowing that they didn't go to Southern Cal and get waxed. They put on a good showing, and I, I give credit to Longhorns. I, I give them respect because they were a huge underdog, and they just about pulled that game off. And we'll see what happens. And by the way, you know, you never know when OU plays Texas if Shane Bouchelle is going to be back. And if that happens, that's going to be a big upgrade for the offense. But again, defensively, Texas last night, um, even though Sam Darnold ended up with a lot of passing yardage, it was not one of his best nights. And he had some picks, and he got sacked a few times. And Texas' defense, uh, I'm telling you, that, that's a big improvement from what we saw two weeks ago. I did not see that coming. As far as the Big 12 on Saturday, again, Oklahoma State, again, it's just Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is a lousy team. But OSU put 49 points on the board before halftime on the road. So Cowboys are to be commended for that. Um, nice win for Texas Tech. Um, you know, outlasting Arizona State, that was one of my locks of the week on my My 3 Picks show. As far as the over, boy, neither team knows how to play defense, and I knew that was going to happen, so I took the over in that game and ended up winning that one easily. Um Nice win for Iowa State on the road. Um, and then if you're looking at other matchups, though, I'll tell you what, the Kansas schools, they're lousy. Um, the Jayhawks losing losing at Ohio. And Kansas State ranked in the top 20, scoring seven points at one of the bottom feeders of the SEC. That's Vanderbilt. That's right, Vanderbilt. Only seven points. Uh, and, and that's really a shame for Bill Snyder's squad because they were one of those squads that, uh, you know, looked like could give, be a major contender in the Big 12. Not after that performance in Nashville on Saturday. So, Sooners now get Baylor. The Baylor Bears, struggle city for those guys. Still looking for their first win, 0-3, losing at Duke by two scores. You would think that the Sooners could go into Waco and, and lay a big score. In fact, you'd probably think the Sooners might be able to get a lot of fans at Waco. It's like, I think it's like a what, four, four-and-a-half-hour trip from Norman to Waco, Central Texas. So that's something to also consider as well. But uh, Matt Rule squad right now, um, trying to find their identity, and they still haven't found it again. Um, a rough September so far for Baylor, 0-3. Game, by the way, will be, I think, on FS1, uh, one of the Fox cable channels, 5.30 on Saturday. I have my weekly matchup show coming up in just a few days of Oklahoma and Baylor. And again, there's never a guarantee in football. I mean, who, who knows about Baylor? Maybe they'll play like these beasts that we have that we saw under Art Browse in, in the latter part of his era. But very unlikely, Sooners should be able to get to 4-0, and they'll be big favorites in the game at Waco. So the Sooners, they're big favorites against Tulane. It didn't start pretty, but it certainly ended pretty. 56-14, Sooners take care of business. Boomer Sooner.